Designing a finite state machine is really a two-step process. In the first step, we're going to identify the states. And because we're using more machines, one reason that we need to allocate states is to give different output combinations. So for each different combination of outputs, we need at least one state. From there, we need to decide what information from the past do we need in order to decide where what out, outputs to give in the future. So is there anything that we observe through the execution that we need to remember in order to make a future decision? And once we have these two things in mind, the third part is really to minimize the number of states because the fewer states that we have, the implementation is simpler and also we're less likely to make a, an error. Once we have the states in place, we want to draw the edges and to do this we're going to visit each state and from each state we're going to account for every possible combination of inputs and figure out where we should go from that state for that combination of inputs. So really I lied, it's a three step process and the zeroth step is to understand the question specification. So I'm not going to read this to you, I'm just going to dive in and if you want to pause the video here to read the specification, that would be an appropriate thing to do. So I look at this question and I notice that there's only two output combinations, that there's the valid burger and all the other combinations will be invalid burgers. And so I'm going to need at least two states. I'm going to have my initial state, which in this case is not a valid burger, and then I'm going to have a state where I've detected a valid burger. So I may have multiple invalid and valid states. From there I will need to understand what are the things that I need to remember from this execution. So one of them is I need to know was bread on the bottom. Any burger that doesn't have bread on the bottom is an invalid burger so I need to remember that bread was not on the bottom and mark those burgers invalid. Another thing I need to remember is have we had at least one patty on the burger? And finally I need to remember did I ever have cheese not on top of a patty? Because that would um, again invalidate the burger. The second condition, the burger must have bread or lettuce on the top, it turns out that this is going to be the path to the accept state. The accept state is when we've completed a burger and so this is basically going to be our key to getting to the accept state. So we're not going to need any additional states for that condition because we already have a state for the this is a valid burger state. So let's take a look. So um, let's first consider the the burger must have bread on the bottom. I'm going to have a state, again this isn't a valid burger yet because we don't have at least one patty, um, but I'm going to remember that I have bread on the bottom and you could think that uh, I need states for all of the possible things that I could have on the bottom, but it turns out these are unnecessary duplication because it turns out I'm going to treat having cheese on the bottom the exact same way that I'm going to treat having lettuce on the bottom. That both of them are going to prevent me from ever classifying this burger as a valid burger. And so rather than have all of these redundant states, I'm just going to have one single invalid burger state. So as soon as I detect that my burger is invalid, I'm going to go to that state. And once I'm at that state, since I can never get to a valid burger state, I'm going to remain there. So I'm going to go ahead and do these initial transitions just to get them out of the way. So I see that uh, bread is A naught and B naught. So, so I can write A prime B prime. And then the complement of that is one of two things. I can say either it's the opposite of A prime B prime or alternatively I can say A or B. So if either A or B is true then clearly it's not A prime B prime. So if I get cheese, a patty, or lettuce as my first ingredient I'm going to set this to be an invalid burger. Otherwise if there's bread on the bottom I know that that's a good thing. So 
The second thing I'm going to consider is that our burger must have at least one patty. So I need to know if our burger has had a patty yet. So let's go ahead and create a state where we we get the patty. So if we're in the the bread on the bottom state and we get a patty, which is A prime B, then we know we have a patty. And from the patty state, we know it's okay to have cheese. And it's okay to have bread and lettuce. So we need the patty state to distinguish the situations where it's okay to put cheese on. But in addition to that, we also need to delineate whether this burger could be completed. That before we receive our first patty, we should never be able to get to the valid burger state. But we do need a state which is not yet a current valid burger, but that we've already had at least one patty. And so I'm going to call that the has patty state. So this turns out to be all of the states that we need. We have the invalid burger state. I have a pre-patty, not yet invalid burger state. I have the I have a patty state. And then a post-patty, not yet invalid burger state and then finally a valid burger state. So the remaining thing to do is go and visit all of my states and say what to do on each transition. So uh, we already handled the start state, we handled the invalid burger state, all transitions go back to that state. So at the bread state um, we said okay if we had a patty we should go to the patty state. If we have cheese, well we can't put cheese on top of bread or anything that's not a patty. So this is a, you know, we're not having a patty. So if we put cheese on here, we'll go to the invalid state. So it's okay to have internal bread or lettuce in our sandwich. If I have another piece of bread or I have a piece of lettuce, I'll stay in the um, not yet invalid sandwich, but no patty yet state. Once I get a patty, it's okay to have another patty. You can have patties on top of patties. Um, we, if we get bread or lettuce at that point, that's a valid burger. So there's bread and there's lettuce. Um, and if we get cheese, well that's not yet a valid burger, but it's not an invalid burger. And since we already received a patty, we can go to the has patty state. Um, from the has patty state, oh, I should say this is not yet, this is not a valid burger. If we see bread or lettuce, we know we have a valid burger. If we see another patty, we go back to the patty state. Um, and if we have cheese, well, you can't put cheese on top of cheese. And so I will go to the the invalid burger state because I can't put cheese on top of that. Okay, so I've accounted for um, all the combinations from the has patty state from the valid burger state. If I continue to put bread or lettuce on my sandwich, it will stay valid. If I put another patty on, I will go back to the patty state and again I can't put cheese on top of bread or lettuce and so I will go to the invalid burger state. And I think we're done and so before I submit at this point I go and I double check to make sure that each of my states has all of the edges accounted for. So A or B covers three of them, it covers everything but the A not B not state. From this state, one covers everything. From this state, I get zero, zero, and one, one, and then I have one, zero, and zero, one, so that's good. So you notice that in every case, I always put the literals in the same order. I always do A before B, and that way I can easily see, oh, A, B prime, and A prime, B, you know, I've covered all the cases. Um, so from this state, I have A prime, B, I have zero, zero, one, one, and one zero. From this state I have zero zero and one one. I have zero one and I have one zero. 
and then from this state again I have 0, 0, and 1, 1, 1, 0, and 0, 1. So it looks pretty good. So I'm ready to go ahead and grade this, and I do, and grade all my saved answers, and it says, yay, you did it right. 